So I have decided to uh, do another video to really, really drive the point home about this delusion that I just talked about in the previous video uh, concerning um, 2 Thessalonians 2, the rejection of Jerusalem today, the, which is the truth. The, re, the Jerusalem is Israel's capital. And the wholesale rejection of that truth by at least 90% of Christianity today. So, uh, first of all, before I get started once again, what am I wearing? I am wearing the clothing of shame that was forced upon the Jews during the Crusades and in the Holocaust and also the Yellow Star. In their honor... <coughs> having faith knowing that they will rise up to condemn their persecutors. Now, here's what I want to do. Luke 21, verses, verse 20 through 24. I had talked about how there is a delusion among Christians, especially among evangelical Christians today, who even though they believe that Jerusalem is Israel's capital, they also believe that there is going to be a great person, man, who will rise up and Make peace with Israel. And will bring in a great tribulation upon Israel. This is what they believe. That is absolutely 100% false. Because they misread Daniel 9. As I said, we'll go to Daniel 9 very quickly here. As I said in the previous video, all of Daniel 9 has been finished except one, the destruction of the desolator. That's it. That's the only thing that's left. And I pointed out in my last video that the desolator was Rome under the command of Titus. I went over in Wikipedia that the temple was reduced to dust. There is nothing left of the temple. Nothing. And the reason why people are claiming, the evangelicals are claiming that the temple must be rebuilt is so that Luke 21, verses 20 through 24 can happen. Because in their minds it has not been fulfilled yet incredible. It's absolutely incredible, and it's a delusion. So, as I said, we're going to go to Daniel 9. I'm going to use uh, the King James Version, because that's what everybody's familiar with, and right now, King, okay, finally, King James is pulling up. So, I'm telling you right now that the only thing that is left is the last several words. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolator. Okay. Everything else is done. Titus, the Roman general, was that prince of the people that came and destroyed the city and the sanctuary. I proved it. All you have to do is look up Titus, the Roman general, on Wikipedia, and just scroll down and look up the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. And it will prove that this has been done. Finished. Over. 
So, Luke 21, verse 20. When you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, it was. Titus, the Roman general, encompassed Jerusalem with armies. Then know that its desolation thereof is nigh. And them that which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them that which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countryside enter into the city. For these be the days of vengeance. Not yet, not, see, those are the, when that happens, that's the day of vengeance. Vengeance for what? Vengeance for rejecting the Messiah. Those were the days. So that all things which are written might be fulfilled. So when that event happened, it was fulfilled. Okay? But woe unto them that were child and would get, give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and a wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Now, you don't believe it, I will do this again. I will drive the point home. The siege of Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the Jews had become embroiled in a civil war of their own, splitting the resistance in Jerusalem between several factions. The uh, Sikari, led by Menachem ben Judah, could hold on for long. The Zealots, led by Eleazar ben Simon, eventually fell under the command of the Galilean leader John of Gush Halav and of the northern rebel commander Simon bar Gioria managed to gain leadership over the Edomites, Edomians. Titus besieged Jerusalem. The Roman army was joined by the 12th legion, which was previously defeated under Cestius Gallus, and from Alexandria Vespasian sent Tiberius Julius Alexander, governor of Egypt, to act as Titus's second in command. Titus surrounded the city with three legions. So you say that Luke 21, oh boy, I lost it. So you say that Luke 21 verses, Twenty through twenty-four hasn't happened yet. Want to bet? How much are you willing to wager? Hmm? Titus surrounded the city. Let's go to Luke twenty-one again. Verse twenty. When you see. Jerusalem surrounded with armies. Know that its desolation thereof is nigh. Them that are in Judea flee into the mountains and lend them, let them that are in the middle of Jerusalem depart and let not those who live in the countryside enter into Jerusalem. Leave. Because these are the days of vengeance upon who? Upon Jerusalem for rejection of the Messiah. Why? Look, watch. See if I can find it. Matthew 23, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who killed the prophets 
and stones and stones so that oh, hold on I'm, I need to go straight to it here 23 20 37 Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that killed the prophets and stoned them that which are sent to you. How long, how often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, but you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, you shall not see henceforth until you shall say, blessed is he that comes in the name of Jehovah. Okay. So this is the reason right here, vengeance was upon Jerusalem, as it is written in Luke 21. Uh, verse 22, for these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Now, let's go back to Titus. Once again, Titus surrounded the city with three legions, the fifth legion, the twelfth legion, and the fifteenth legion on the western side, and a tenth on the Mount of Olives to the east. Now, you know the tenth on the Mount of Olives? Ooh, if only people understood what that meant. That's for another subject. It's for another video. To the east. He put pressure on the food and the water supplies of the inhabitants by allowing pilgrims to enter the city to celebrate Passover and then refuti refusing them egress. Jewish raids continuously harassed the Roman army, one of which nearly resulted in Titus being captured. After attempts by Josephus to negotiate a surrender had failed, the Romans resumed hostilities and quickly breached the first and second wall of the city. To intimidate the resistance, Titus ordered deserters from the Jewish side to be crucified around the city wall. By this time, the Jews had been exhausted by famine, and when the weak Third wall was breached. Bitter street fighting ensued. The Romans finally captured the Antonia Fortress and began a frontal assault on the gates of the temple. Titus was apparently bent on ending Judaism as a religion. He sought to slaughter their animals, kill their men, rape their women, enslave their children, and kill their God. Think about that for a minute. When he finally did breach the walls... His soldiers set upon everyone, man, woman, and child, those who stayed loyal to Rome and those who did not. The city went up in flames, the roar of the inferno, mixed with screams of agony, as the Romans swept through the upper and lower city, literally clamoring over dead bodies in pursuit of the rebels until they reached the temple, set it aflame, and reduced it to dust. When the fire subsided, Titus gave the order to destroy the remainder of the city, leaving, seeking that no one would remember the name of Jerusalem anymore. The temple was demolished, after which Titus' soldiers proclaimed him imperator in honor of the victory. Now, are you not still, are you still not convinced that Titus the Roman general did exactly what was written in Luke 21 verses 20? Through 24. Now, it says, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, listen to this, folks. When the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled, what happens? Do you know? Is Jerusalem going to be destroyed again? That's not what Paul said. That's not what Paul said. Watch this, folks. Romans 11. One of my, I don't know, it might be my favorite chapter. It might be, yeah, my favorite scripture. Romans 11. Remember what we just read? Until the time of the Gentiles 
is finished. Look at this. Verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So in other words, what Paul is saying is that Israel's eyes will be opened. The Holy Spirit will be poured out upon Israel once the time of the Gentiles is finished. When does that start? I have proven it starts after the 77s of Daniel 9 are finished. I have proven that they are finished. The 1-7 for Titus the Roman general when he destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. 62 sevens from Zerubbabel unto when Messiah was cut off, Messiah the suffering servant was cut off. And seven sevens from the call to rebuild Jerusalem that happened in June 7, 1967 until Shavuot 2016. That is when the time of the Gentiles are finished. And it's time when it's time to reappoint Jerusalem. You want to go to Daniel 9 again? Let's do this. I never would have thought. I never would have thought of all the things that shocked me the most was it occurred to me the day that President Donald Trump pointed out the obvious that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. Okay. Here's what I'm getting at. It was reappointed by somebody other than the, the, uh, the Jews. Look, let me show you something. And I believe this was what happened here a few days ago was by the will of Jehovah himself, by Donald Trump, pointing out that Jerusalem is indeed the capital of Israel. All right. Um, Gabriel's 70 weeks. Let's start in verse 24. 70 weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city. What is the holy city? Jerusalem. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. The most holy place is Jerusalem. And of all things, somebody out of nowhere, a man who's called a fool, a man who's called crazy, pointed out the obvious to everyone. You see, folks, Jerusalem is re-anointed. Just months after Israel's after Jerusalem's jubilee, just months after Jerusalem's jubilee, what happened? What happened was the president of the United States said, and I quote, Jerusalem is Israel's capital. He didn't say West Jerusalem is Israel's capital like Russia did. No, he said, Jerusalem is Israel's capital. This very year, the U.S. Senate affirmed by a 90 to 0 vote that Jerusalem is Israel's undivided capital, reaffirmed the law that was passed in 1995. 
So I'm, I'm going to make a claim today. Jerusalem is reanointed, is reappointed. The time of the Gentiles are finished. What happens after the time of the Gentiles are finished? Matthew 23, no, not Matthew 23, Luke 21. What happens after that? And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity. The waves and the seas roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after the things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, singular, with power and great glory. And when you see these things come to pass, Israel, then look up and lift up your heads because your Israel, your redemption is near. You can sit in delusion all you want to. That's your choice. I'm not going to stand in delusion and call Israel's Messiah the Antichrist. How? What is wrong with these people? What is wrong with you people who do this? The one who's going to bring Israel back you're going to call him the evil one? Do it at your own peril. But remember this. Somebody told you differently. Somebody told you those teachings that your preachers are teaching you are delusions. And that someone is me.